Now let us learn about the basic tools from mathematics that we use in economics. And what you should remember is economics is an applied field or in a way something like applied mathematics. And the level of mathematics we'll use in this course will be 7th or 8th grade math. Now in economics what we are interested in analyzing is the relationship between variables and most of the times to keep life simple for ourselves we look at the relationship between two variables. The relationship between two variables can be represented in terms of a diagram like this one and this is called a two-dimensional diagram you, something you must have seen when you were in school <clears throat> and on the horizontal axis what we have is the value of a variable which we'll call x and then on the vertical axis you have the values of a variable which we'll call y why are they called x and y they're simply by convention and what we do is we draw these lines we join them and Wherever these two axes or lines meet, what you have is the point of origin. And then you divide each of these axes, x and the y axis, into parts. And then you label them. So what you have is 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on on the x and the y axis. Now suppose you are given a point like A, which is represented by which equals 3, 4. Whenever we write numbers like this, remember this, this is an ordered sequence. That means the placing of each number has a meaning. The first variable, the first number will always represent the value of x and the second number will always represent the value of y. And this is a standard practice that we use. So a equals 3, 4 and we know x is 3 and y is 4. So how do we plot this point? What we do is we go three steps on the x-axis. Why? Because x is equal to 3. And we draw a vertical line from here. So here you have it. And let me just straighten this out. And here it is. <clears throat> and move it at point 3. So there you go. <clears throat> now y is 4. So what do we do? We go 4 spaces on the y-axis and draw a horizontal line from there. And here you have it. And once again, let me just place it correctly the way where I want it to be placed and straighten this. Now, wherever these two lines meet, you have this point A, which is 3, 4. And this is how we plot a point on a diagram like this one. Suppose you are given another point, let's call it B. And B is 4, 5, and we already know that X will be 4 and Y will be 5. So we go 4 spaces on the X axis. And we draw a vertical line from there. And let me just straighten this out. There we go. And bring it to the right place. It's almost there. <clears throat> and y is 5. So what we do is we go 5 spaces on the vertical axis and draw a horizontal line from there. Wherever these two lines meet, you have this new point here. And this will be B, which is 4, 5. So this is how we plot points onto a diagram like this one. And we can join points like A and B. And what we will get is a line or a curve. Now note here, this line or a curve is rising up or is upward sloping. 
And what this means is the following. As you in increase value of x, what happens to value of y? It increases as well. <clears throat> and if you reduce value of x, what happens to value of y? It will fall. Or in other words here, this is an upward sloping line. And what you find is both variables x and y move in the same direction. That is, if x increases, y increases. And if y falls, x falls as well. This type of relationship is called positive relationship. Look at this diagram. It's very similar to the one I had drawn on the previous slide. And what you find is this particular line is upward sloping or rising up. And what this reflects is a positive relationship. And what do we mean by positive relationship? When you increase the value of x, what happens to the value of y? It increases as well. And when you reduce value of x, what happens to value of y? It falls. So whenever you see an upward sloping line or a curve, remember this represents positive relationship. This diagram, where you see a downward sloping line or a curve, this represents a negative relationship. And what do we mean by negative relationship? When you increase value of x, what happens to value of y? It falls. And when you reduce value of x, what happens to value of y? It increases. Or in other words, Whenever you see a downward sloping line on a curve, of course, it means negative relationship. And by negative relationship, we mean x and y, or both variables, move in opposite direction. When one increases, the other one falls. And when the other one increases, the first one falls. Let us revisit the diagram that I drew two slides back. We had points A which is 3, 4, and point B, which is 4, 5. And when we join them, we get this line. Now, what we find in terms of this diagram is the following. When you increase x by one unit from 3 to 4, what happens to y? It also increases by one unit from 4 to 5. Or in other words, what we get by looking at this diagram is by how much does y change when x changes by one unit. And I have typed this out and here you can see. Now think for a moment what math concept do we use when we are trying to measure this, but how much does y change when x changes by one unit? And this is called the slope. And what is slope? It is change in y, value of y, divided by change in the value of x. So here we have how we measure slope change in y divided by change in x. Whenever we use the term change, what it means is you just work out the difference between two consecutive values of that particular variable, and that's what it is. So what will be change in x? It'll be the change in the value of x, and that is it changes from 3 to 4. So you just work out the difference, 3 minus 4. And what will this be? This will equal negative 1, negative 1. Similarly, we can figure out what will be change in y. And that will be 4 minus 5 the difference in two consecutive values 
of y and this will be negative 1 and you divide change in y by change in x so what you have is negative 1 divided by negative 1 and this equals plus 1 so when you see a number like plus 1 it implies two things number one look at the positive sign associated with the slope when you get a positive sign associated with the slope what this reflects is a positive relationship what does this number one mean it simply means when we increase value of x by one unit y changes by one unit if for some reason in some other example you had a slope value of negative 5 what this would mean when you increase value of x by one unit what happens to value of y it falls and by how much by five units so these kind of inferences we draw and these are very useful for us uh, for example if my income increases by a thousand dollars but how much does my savings go up or if the temperature outside falls by say 20 degrees what happens to my consumption of coffee so economists other social scientists business people medical doctors and all that they are trying to quantify in precise terms what is the impact of one variable in terms of the other in terms of precise numbers and that's what the slope tells us that is once again by how much does y change when x changes by one unit.